Today we are going to try something extremely difficult. Two players against six hard armies, three Gondors and three Rohans and we are playing Isengard and Mordor on the map in Edwith in Battle for Middle of 1 on the patch 2.22. And in Edwith is a map with an outpost. It means we have only three spots and zero defense. No walls, nothing like that. A wide open land that lies to the west of Rohan is a description of the map in Edwith and who now has the strength to face against the forces of Isengard and Mordor. Holy guacamole, I'm excited. I believe this is going to be something next level because on the patch 2.22, the AI is a little bit harder. They have now much more available command points, which also means they will be spamming lots and lots of units on us. And also, Hard Army Rohan, if you don't know, and if this is your very first time on this channel, He's going to spam lots of ants. <laughs> and this is not fun to play against. Trust me on that one. Okay, so I was asking my ally if I can actually have his settlement. Because Isengard early on will need a little bit more money in compared to Mordor. And Mordor is more like a sport faction in this, in, in this you know, scenario. Because we will need the sport leadership from the Drummer Troll, the Eye of Sauron, Darkness, and of course the Witch King himself. So, the plan... What I have in my mind, hopefully, is going to work out, is to, you know, kill the hard army next to our side of the map as soon as possible, to turn to, to turn the 2v6 situation into a 2v5 situation instead. My ally is actually capturing those, look at this, Gollum, look at this cutie. He's capturing all these settlements in the middle, which is okay, because he has the chance to recruit Gollum early on, and Gollum is extremely fast and also invisible most of the time. So let's grab the settlement first and... It's good timing because by the time our Urukai is arriving to the next side of the map, the second Uruk is gonna also get recruited, and that means with these two Urukai, and hopefully the Eye of Sauron from my ally, he might be able to deal great amount of damage. Hopefully he's paying attention. And by the way, guys, um, when it comes to deal damage to a hard army in this kind of situations, what I would recommend you to do is to not fully defeat him, you know? What you need to do is destroy his production building, in this case Archer Range Barracks, in this case actually Archer Range, and take down his Citadel, you know, that's the plan. War Chant, I have Sauron, please, please, there we go, nice, great. Now, one of them is gonna fight the Archers and one of them is gonna take down, or try to take down rather, archer range and after that basically now our units with the eye of sauron and warchan combination are able to deal 100 percent more damage and they have 50 percent more armor and 100 percent more uh, combat experience or 50 percent more combat experience whether which means they will not be only able to deal more damage they will become more tanky and also they will be able to level up way way faster Oh, level 2 already, that's good. Um, because now what we can do with this Urukai is to combine this Uruk with a crossbowman. This way we will have a level 2 combination, which is always great. Okay, so basically, like I said, we will try to take down the Citadel, but that's it, you know. We will not finish him off. We will not finish him off and hope that he will be out of the game without being defeated, if this makes sense for you guys. Because defeating him will only give uh, the other hard armies the option to capture this outpost. And if we can, I mean, we could capture this outpost ourselves, but we have no way of keeping it protected. That is literally not possible. Okay, so we have two, three males outside. That's great. It means we have a lot of wood bonus. And with that, we can also get the armory a bit cheaper. And that's the plan. Um, I'm not going to rush Lourdes in this kind of situations. I want to actually get my units as strong as potentially possible. And this is only possible in Battle for Middle of One if you update them with heavy armor, with uh, fire arrows or the banner. So I want to make sure that the unit, this one, you know, the Uruk, with which, which is only level 1, is going to get the last hit on the lair. This way I will have two level 2 Urukai. And then I can combine this two with two crossbowmen and get two times level two combo battalion. That is the plan. You know where to go. We've the and perfect timing. So we are also only one power open away from getting the industry unlocked, which is going to be needed because armory is building up as we are talking. And we will need a lot of money because the upgrades from Isengard are extremely expensive if, if you have not the steel bonus from the furnaces. Furnaces in Battle for Middle of One are giving you a steel bonus. That again is gonna make your upgrades cheaper. Fire arrow for more DPS. 
and let's go ham. And look at this Gondor, he's not rebuilding anything yet. That's like a win-win situation for us. That's so nice. And I would also like to get this outpost. Why? Because I would, you know, like to build three furnaces in this outpost. This way, I have a bit more money and resource income, but also more steel bonus, you know, percentage discount for the for upgrades. They will have also now fire arrow. They will deal much more damage. Oh! I wanted to creep the troll layers in the middle of the map. It looks like the army, hard army is already doing that. But hey, <laughs> thank you very much, man, for the money. Let's use Warchan. Give me eye, please. Does he have eye of Sauron? Yes, he has eye of Sauron. That's nice. And now we can kill them and get all the money. We are growing rich now. Give them fire arrows too. There we go. I mean, fire arrows are so expensive. Once again, the problem is uh, we have not enough furnaces to make the upgrades a bit cheaper. But that is about to be changed. We are getting so much experience here, and Balrog is needed as soon as possible. Hopefully, we will get the power points to the Balrog summon uh, really fast. And maybe if we are lucky, the army, the hard army, is not gonna get the chance to spam lots of ants. Maybe we are more next. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, no way. <laughs> Oh, that's a nightmare. No way! The ant mood is already coming up so early into the game. How rich is this? Oh, hold on, hold on. Please don't trample. Oh my goodness. You know, without heavy armor, the combos are so vulnerable against trample damage from Rohirrim. Oh, I need to send them now back to my outpost. Because they are so badly damaged, I don't want to lose them. The worst thing that can happen to us early on... Oh my goodness, my ally also needs assistance, I guess. Uh, the worst thing that can happen to us early on is to lose an uh, upgraded combat battalion. Because uh, just imagine how expensive this is going to be, you know. Crossbow man, Urukai combo, this combination all alone is going to cost you 600 resources. And then you need to invest 800 for the fire arrow and 640 for the heavy armor. Just imagine how expensive a unit is. So losing it means pretty much like losing the game. There is Faramir coming also. Holy quackamole. Now we can demolish that. We don't need forge blades in this situation because we will not recruit any, um, you know, pikemen. We don't need that. We will have a lot of leadership. That's the only good thing about this situation. We can kill, kill Faramir there. Let's kill Faramir first. Let's get lords on the field. Ends are going to come very soon. And after killing Faramir, we can assist our ally. Look like looks like the troll has been taken down. Oof, guys. Oh, but he's a Nazgul. Okay, that's good. That's very good. Um, even though I... Move your feet. The ants, dude. The ants, leave me alone. Um, even though I would like to see the Witch King a little bit more. Of course, obviously, the Witch King is much more expensive in compared to a normal Nazgul slash Velvis, but Witch King would be definitely the better choice. But it's fine. Hopefully, with the Nazgul, he will be able to defend himself without having to rely on me too much. But ideally, I should also place a couple of combos to my allies' outposts, you know, to protect them all the time. Okay, so... The, oh my goodness, man, the pressure is real. They are everywhere. They are literally everywhere. My outpost in the, in the middle has been just taken down. We have Lourdes now on the field. I'm so afraid, you know, when I move now from my own outpost to my allies outpost to protect them, that I might get attacked at pretty much the same time. You know, that's something I don't like to see. Oh man, guys, that's... Oh, never mind, the ants are gone, that's good. Elvin is running it down, I am no man. <laughs> Okay, Farami is going down, uh, but I was not able to get experience with Lourdes, that's fine though. Lourdes should be still able to level up in no time in this situation. If we need to get him to level 5, ideally even level 6 for the pillage, which means money, money, money every time we kill enemy units. And again, in a situation like that, we will eventually kill thousands of units at the end of the game. Injured land, we can spam it, you know. Injured land will give us more armor and also fear resistant. Fear resistant doesn't really matter, but having additional armor for the units is always nice. We need more units, but we are all about to be command points kept. So, what I want to do is, you know, eventually uh, make like two armies. The army with lords and three combos for offensive purposes. And then, 
like leave two combos at my allies side of the outpost this way we don't have to go back and forth all the time you know because in order to win this defending all alone is not going to be enough obviously we need to also take down the enemy outpost oh don't lose the drummer troll yes two of them luckily they are also able to sport each other with additional armor which is very important to keep those drummer trolls a little bit longer alive and you know what instead of going for the freezing rain what i will eventually do is to um, unlock the devastation power from the spellbook of isengard because you know uh, freezing rain is not a bad thing it's like really strong but i guess in a situation like that i would need rather more resources than actually being able to and nullify any leadership bonuses okay but look at how many peasants i mean peasants are fine for me as long as he has no rohirrim or ants it's fine let's build a tower put pressure uh, you want to make sure that's why we are always switching back and forth we want to make sure that we are keeping those combos protected and that we don't lose a full battalion that's extremely important guys okay so keep fighting um we are kind of broke so i would like to recruit saruman but i have no money okay so the pressure is real i cannot leave this area the ends are coming now let's use warchand eventually for killing gimli that is gimli gimli is extremely tanky let's go for you know um rain anyway the reason why i was actually not going for a devastation is um devastation is gonna slow down the progress of the progress of us trying to reach out um to the balrog you know balrog is very important in this matchup and potentially our only hope to actually defeat one of the opponents or two of the opponents if you micro balrog nicely you can at least take, take down two outposts three beards three beard is no more he's burning Oh, that's nice. Now we got also Lourdes level 5. That's huge. Now we have also 60% more damage leadership from Lourdes and 50% more damage leadership from the Drummer Troll, right? So 110% damage leadership without I and without the War Chant. My ally is using the Tinted Land and yeah, that's something we can spam all the time, you know? Because just buying the Outpost once again, the Outpost getting literally one-shotted. But as you can see and tell, um, money isn't a problem for the hard army you know they have like infinite amount of resources pretty much that's why they are also able to build multiple end moves all the time and ends are not only <clears throat> sorry and ends are not only able to deal crazy and insane amount of damage but also they are so annoying to deal with they have long <laughs> like what talking about being annoying look at this oh my god what what dude oh my goodness what is this pressure there are rangers like literally the entire fangorn forest is moving out are you kidding me i don't know man luckily we are able to kill them quite fast with this much leadership but still elvin faramir oh faramir elvin mm, oh don't touch my troll <laughs> All right, we need to take down these end moods as soon as possible. Parami is trying to show his quality to his lady Elvin, but Elvin has been taken down already. Elvin is so squishy against... I mean, basically anything would get literally blown up in this kind of situations because we have so much crazy amount of leadership. Look how many ends does he actually have. We gotta use war chants here. I don't know what to focus first. We need to fail. Again, losing a combo is going to be the worst case scenario and we don't... It is literally Farami shooting from downtown. Our towers under, are under pressure. The ends are going to war. And we just lost a full outpost. Our first outpost from the beginning of the game. And look our money. We are poor. We have no chance of actually recruiting anytime soon the wizard himself. The only good thing is our lord is level 6. Which means we will get money every time we kill enemy units. And Lourdes has to be nearby, you know? This end is a permanent end too from the end mode. Holy crap, I'm only. Okay. Nice. Aragon has been taken down. We are the power points are rising to the sky. That's dope. We need to recapture this outpost now. 
As we are talking, we, I have literally zero resource buildings on the map. I have not a single lumber mill, not a single slaughterhouse, not a single furnace. So the only money I'm getting right now is from the Citadel. <laughs> and of course from the village of Lourdes. Okay, level 10. I mean, everyone is pretty much level 10 at this point, or almost level 10. So level 7, level 8, level 9, level 10. And once again, I keep saying that all the time because it's so important. Level advantage in Battle for Middle Earth 1 is massive. So you want to always level up your units and keep them protected. And that's, I believe, one of the one of the major differences between Battle for Middle Earth 1 and Battle for Middle Earth 2 and Rise of the Witch King. In Battle for Middle Earth 1, it's a bit more about quality instead of quantity. And I've been casting and hosting tournaments for BFME 2 slash Rise of the Witch King many, many times. And I can tell you, besides the heroes, there are the units and you don't need to necessarily keep them alive and protected. You can actually lose them. It's more about a spammy game. Um, and you, you can just like build five barracks and then spam soldiers all the time. If you lose them, it's whatever, you know. But in Battle for Middle of One, it actually matters a lot. And by the way, we also lost this outpost once again. I don't know what to say. Ends are coming. I mean, the only good news is that we have Balrog very soon. So with Balrog, hopefully, we will be able to defeat somebody. And let's fight this. I believe instead of going for Saruman, I might actually uh, even, you know, create more combos. And hopefully be able to extend the command points. Because our units, even though they are so powerful with this much leadership, they are still being outnumbered big time. That is Gandalf the Grey. Cripple him, Lourdes. Look, look, look. You, you shall not pass, Gandalf the Grey. Okay, boys. It is time. It is time to use Palantir. Not industry. Yeah, Palantir. Not here. I don't want to use it on Gondor. Let's use it on Rohan. Balrog. Demon from the ancient world. Oh my goodness. Bale, please don't die. I need to watch literally everywhere. There is Aragorn. Aragorn, please don't try me. Don't try me. You can be King Elessa all you want. Maybe you have the chance even to win against Sauron, but not against the Balrog of Morgoth. Only Gandalf can defeat him. Pew. Okay, that's a one shot. It's nice. Is he going to be defeated now? That's the question. Please fly to this plot spot. Um, okay. Okay, we need to fight this. Why didn't you fly? Man, come on now. Please fly. Aragorn is chasing us. <laughs> Aragorn is chasing us, but triple steel. I'm telling you guys, money is not a problem. And more ends are coming. Holy guacamole. Oh man, oh man, oh man. Luckily, our ally, you know, with the Nazgul is helping out a little bit. But we need to try to destroy this Rohan. Please, come on now. Breath fire, breath fire, breath fire, breath fire. Come on. Do it. Look, Eowyn smite. What damage my Balrog that much? I don't know. Okay, is he defeated? No, he is not defeated. So we haven't defeated anybody just yet. Man, I don't know what to say, seriously. I mean, the good thing is we are keeping all the heroes, uh, all the units protected. Our heroes, as, you know, in this case we have only Lords, is also being alive all the time. But other than that, it's not looking good for you, for my, for my Isengard and Mordor. Okay, uh, yeah, I believe we cannot afford to save for Saruman at this point, guys. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe Devastation could be... Wait, cripple this guy first. You shall not move. Nazgul is getting in safety. Legolas is going to be taken down. That's dope. The end is trying to trample. Micro, 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 micro. Okay. Nice. We got in safety just barely. There is another Legolas. But we get so much money from killing actually... Um, that's it. And the ends because of the pillage from Lourdes, you know. That is Gimli. And you can see Gimli is a little bit more beefy. The ends are dying slowly but surely. That's good. We get 150 resources for killing each of these ends. And more. Yeah, I, guess, I guess at this point we need to just destroy that uh, end mood, you know. Now we can even... I don't know. Let's use Palantir to actually get vision. I mean, on this map, Devastation is not the best thing. 
I guess, but we gotta just use it at this point. And now we can also recruit Saruman. The white wizard. Saruman of many colors. I mean, we have six power points collected. We can, if you wanted to, to pick up the Heal the Fires, but let's be real, we have zero number mills outside. So Heal the Fires, oh my, please, don't die level seven. Please run, 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 run. The spam though, we need to kill this end. You know, prioritizing the target is very important. I'm just gonna cripple him. I wanna, I wanna kill him as soon as possible, you know? Let's make more units. Our Saruman is gonna be there on the, on the field very, very soon. And our ally is also under pressure. I see that. But we need to defend ourselves. There is Aragorn, and uh, there is no Aragorn anymore. Okay? I mean, without under this sword, Aragorn isn't tanky. But also, if he would even have the under this sword, uh, leadership system is just insane in Battle for Middle of One, you know? And some of you guys even complaining about uh, the nerf to the leadership system in Battle for Middle of One on the patch 2.22. And even with the, with the nerf of the leadership, you can still see that the units are still able to hit like an absolute track. Once they have drummer throw next to them, war chant lords, you know, you can literally one shot and blow up anything you touch. Okay, so um, good news is we are still in the game. We have been successfully defending ourselves all the time. And bad news is we haven't defeated anybody yet. <laughs> and we have still six openings to be, to be done with, you know. The problem is, however, we have no... You see, there is permanent pressure. We have, like, zero time to actually recover. Let's steal them. Fight for me. And I will hold your oaths fulfilled. What say you? Peasants. Maybe war riders, but we are command points kept. Okay. Saruman, with level 8, might be actually quite useful in this kind of situation with the will of Saruman, the new ability from the patch 2.22, which is going to... Uh, provide you with some healing and sustain. Okay, tribute, not tribute, but one of the trees. Uh, who cares about the name? Uh, normally, I like trees and I also like ants, you know? But I have, a, I have a feeling that I will have a nightmare about ants and tribute in this night. Let's pick it, you know, just. Like, oh, there is Gandalf, the grey. <laughs> I mean, we don't even need to watch because he's gonna get just one shot. Look at them. Look at them. Oh, okay. Gandalf the Grey is without blasting our units. And we get so much money for killing him. That's good. That's hey, hey, kill him, kill him. Please, 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 please. Luckily, when you put fire on the ends, I mean, when they are burning, they will have like this weird animation in which they are like confused. Like, I am burning. I don't know what's happening, you know? And then you can, in this meantime, you can use the time to your advantage to burst them down. But the second you kill one of them, like, ten more of them are coming, you know what I'm saying? Like, literally more ends than orcs. Trust me on that one. Okay, we are actually having every single power point unlocked. Uh, Lord is level 10. Uh, Saruman is gonna eventually get level 10. You know. Slowly but surely. Uh, we hopefully will be able to kill this end mood. The only good thing about killing ends is literally the amount of money you will get from the pillage. From lords. I mean, I believe so far we have gained maybe like 5,000, maybe even more than that from killing ants all alone. Let's use war chant here because I want to fight this and win. And now we actually have to push a little bit. You know what I'm saying, guys? We have to push because it's like a never ending story at this point. If we just defend, we will keep defend, we will be forced to keep defending all the time. And that's again not gonna win us the game. Please kill this Legolas. Come on now. Which king is also on the field? That's dope. Now we have. My ally has to just make sure that we have, I have always a drama troll next to my combos. You know, that's all he needs to do. I mean, he's doing a good job on the left side, but the right side has no drama trolls. Like this army also needs drama troll. I mean, we have now Saruman and Lourdes, but of course, uh, more leadership doesn't hurt. And leadership is a stacking system, which means you can have infinite, uh, infinite amount of damage leadership. For example, there is no limitation. Gimli, the son of Klein. Do you guys remember the scene when actually Aragorn was introducing uh, himself and uh, you know Gimli and Legolas to Elma in the in the you know in the two towers when you know the Rohirrim were kind of uh, after the Rohirrim were done feasting on the flesh of orcs, you know? 
feast on his flesh. And then Aragorn was like, I'm Aragorn, Aragorn's son. This is Gimli, Gloin's son, and this is Legolas. <laughs> you know? And he didn't uh, name the, uh, the the name of the of the daddy of Legolas, who's obviously Thranduil, or Gollum, one of the two. I felt so strange, you know, when this happened. I was so sad for Legolas, he was so confused. He was like, he wanted to fight against Elmi instantly, you know what I'm saying? Okay. So now we can make something happen. That's good. We will destroy this outpost. There is Aragorn. But can he handle this situation? I don't think so. We are just too strong at this point. Look Saruman's picture, dude. On the patch 2.2. Okay. So we will be able to destroy two outposts simultaneously. That's good. Now it's the time to move on. I believe now we gotta just move on and make something happen. We have, now, we have now a great amount of army. Uh, we can't even recruit any more units at this point. Let's go for a Vizaplas. And that's going to hopefully get our Saruman to level 8. I want to unlock the Will of Saruman. Nice. Level 8 is unlocked. Let's use it. None can compete with the Will of Saruman. Okay, let's buy this outpost now and let's keep moving on. Tower, tower, tower. I mean, speechcraft doesn't really. I mean, let's keep fighting here. That's good. Um, I might be forced to actually use Warchant. Let's group them all together for the Warchant. And uh, let's try to destroy at least one more outpost before we stop moving. Oh my goodness. Three beard, more ends. A drama troll is moving on. That's good. But also getting bullied by the human archers. Fireball him. I mean, Fireball this decent amount. Of, I mean, chunks. Three beard. Big time. Just like as the ends because they are biggest weak. Let's cripple this Gandalf too. Their biggest weakness is Lightning Sword. I see you. Gandalf the Grey. Imagine him now going all crazy. You know, I am not Gandalf the Grey. And he's going crazy like... <laughs> Look, <laughs> Legolas is going to get bullied by his own Elven allies next to him. Balrog Summon is available, but we don't need to use it now. I would just like to hold it. Um, and hopefully combine this with like a different push eventually. Look how many peasants are coming. Holy moly. Um, I would... Be, uh, you know, we need to try to defeat the Rohans. First. I believe that's the best thing that we can do. So once again, when you summon the Balrog, you want to make sure that you are able to destroy not one, but two outposts at bare minimum. So Breathfire here should be almost able to one-shot the outpost, hopefully. Oh no, I, I missed the archer range behind. And also, by the way, if you missed, uh, the Balrog is nerfed. Just like Army of the Dead got nerfed in the patch 2.22. Uh, the Balrog, you know, spe specific <laughs> specifically, <laughs> the Balrog isn't able to one-shot level 3 production buildings anymore. With production buildings, I mean specifically, like for example, Archer Range, or Barracks, or Stable, or Uruk Pit, or Orc Pit, Siege Works, you know. These are production buildings and farms, blacksmiths, slaughterhouses, furnaces are resource buildings. They are still getting one-shotted from... The breath fire of Balrog. However, uh, I wanted to make it more challenging uh, because Balrog was always like your biggest win condition. It's like a Exodia card in your deck. You know what I'm saying? Is yes, you could one shot the entire castle of Gondor and Rohan quite easily. You couldn't even mess this up. It was so easy to be done. Now it's a little bit more challenging, and we will see where it goes. Legolas is running it down, and it looks like we were not even able to defeat. <laughs> this Rohan yet. Very frustrating. Let's put pressure. That's good. Let's kill more ants. Okay. So we are command points kept. We cannot use the money anywhere. So we can't do anything with the money we have collected. We have also every power point from the spellbook unlocked. And you can see... Uh, that's, I believe, also the reason why the Badrock Summon is so powerful. Because that's the only... None can compete with the Will of Saruman! Because that's the only um, seat. Summon 
uh, from evil factions. While good factions, for example, in this kind of situations, we could get the chance to summon Rohiri multiple times, to summon elves multiple times, to summon eagles and ants multiple times, and even army after that. But evil factions, they need to kinda... I mean, on the other side, evils are extremely uh, good when it comes to have more leadership bonuses, cancel leadership bonuses with the freezing rain, and be faster infantry-wise, and also have always the best eco in the game. Like, just watch our spell book, you know, we have <clears throat> um, Devastation, we have Field of Fires, we have Scavenger from Mordor, we have Devastation, we have Lord's Pillage, like, we have so many tools of boosting the money to the next level. Okay, the hard armies are starting to get defeated, that's good, that's very, very good. This Arman, don't die, okay? Um... Let's keep moving on, I guess. Aragon has been taken down. It's good. The Rohirrim are dying one by one. They have no chance. Furnace, furnace, furnace. We can also make more units now because the more opponents we defeat, the more command points are going to be available. Okay, this is going to be our next target. We should be able to do that. And also, there is the end mode. We need to take down ASAP. Before more ends are getting spawned, you know? Let's put pressure. Hey, Saruman, don't run into the range of the ends, you know? Ends are dealing crazy amount of damage to heroes, too. I mean, they have, like, really high DPS. And maybe you have seen the 100 ends against 100 cave trolls video. We had posted on the YouTube channel a couple of days ago. It was quite funny. And I believe it will can it can kind of show and prove you how strong the ends are. And talking about, by the way, ends, hard army has been defeated. So we have not many opponents left anymore. I believe, like, two or three more. And... <laughs> What's kind of suffering, guys? What do you guys think about this? Please let me know in the comment section down below. It was... Like the endless waves of... Hey, don't Easter light me like that. Let's use cripple ability. Let's kill the end mood. The endless waves of units, you know? Like the ends especially. Do me a favor if you are interested, of course. I don't want to force you. Do me a favor and count how many ends you have seen me killing in this in the in the in your screen, you know what I'm saying? Maybe I've killed even more ends, not even watching and paying attention, but I would like to know if you guys are of course into that. Let me know. You can also guess, you know? We can like make a guessing number and you guess in the comments down below how many ends do you think I've killed in this game? And you guys, I know you guys like the El Clasico situations, like the clash of evil against good or good against evil. And that's why we decided to uh, play against three Gondors and three Rohans as Mordor and Isengard. Let's use the heal. None can compete with the will of Saruman. You know, that's the reason why we wanted to do that. Okay, so we have Balrog summon uh, for the worst case scenario in about a second, but I believe now it's going to be slowed down as we have defeated the majority of the hard army. There is Gondor, we can defeat him also. I mean, we have, a, we have, you know, I, I believe we did a good job with the macro management in this game. Hard army has been defeated, it's good, it's gonna save our actually, our outpost, that's very nice. We can build now tower. We are broke again. Holy moly. We have no money. <laughs> we are always broke all game long. None can compete with the Villas. I mean, we can steal them, but that's not even needed. And just use Speechcraft for no reason, because our units are already level 10. I mean, that's the max level. You can't get them higher level than that. Is this the last opponent, actually? Now, there is one more, the Rohan. Let's use Warchant. And this might be, you know, the Gondor and then the Rohan right after might be the last opponent. Freezing Rain, just clear it on cooldown. Okay, this Gondor has been defeated, and I believe this Rohan is going to be defeated as well. Are we victorious yet? That's the question. Um, looks like we are not victorious yet. So we need to find another outpost. Oh, there is one outpost. Okay. That is good. You know what I want to do? 
<laughs> I actually want to summon Balrog on my ally and destroy his outpost. <laughs> He's gonna get tilted now. Watch, watch, watch. <laughs> All right, ignite. He doesn't know. He doesn't know. Breath fire. One shot the entire outpost. Come on now. Pew pew. Nice. But he's not defeated. Of course, he has multiple outposts. <laughs> I mean, we have still time to do that one more time. Let's fly Balrog of Morgo. Fly, fly, my friend. Let's buy the outpost so we can have more outposts. He becomes less outposts. He gets less outposts. Let's do that. Imagine, you know, the Balrog and, of course, Explosive Mind. They are having like this friendly fire. Um, also against enemy strike. Hey, fly! What? Why are you not flying? Did you forget how to fly? I mean, now you might say in the comment section down below, Balrogs have no wings. I mean, come on now. Come on now. Come on. Please. Breath fire, come on. Let's go. And also, this outpost is going to be destroyed. Let's go ham, guys. Okay, I mean, luckily, he has, like, one more outpost left only. Like, two more outposts. Okay, no. I mean, we wouldn't get the chance. We have, like, two Balrogs, maybe. We have so much. We have such a strong army, you know. But, my lord, there is no such force. And then you see the Uruks, the Urukai, are leading the Isengard to victory. And we are victorious. No, we are not victorious yet. Why? What's happening? Oh, I'm so blind. There is one more outpost there. Okay. My ally is actually, like, has two Nazgûls, the Witch King, trying to finish off the game. And guys, before the video is getting finished, before the game is getting finished, I want to remind you that this channel is dedicated to the Battle for Middle-earth games. If you guys enjoy this kind of content, if you guys want to see multiplayer games, skirmish games, you know, custom maps, Battle for Middle-earth games, please make sure to subscribe to the channel. I want to say also, you know, Happy Christmas in advance. Hopefully, I will see you next time. Until then, as always, keep hitting like a truck. And also stay beyond standards. But the video, we need to first of all, I want to see how many units we have killed generally. I mean, that's something I want to take a look into before finishing the video. It was extremely challenging. I mean, I was sweating for the majority of the time, uh, super focused, and we have killed 1,700 units. And now you know how many units we killed. I want you to guess in the comment section down below how many of these units. But actually ends. I will see you next time. Until then, keep it safe. Peace out.